We have our plan in hand. We have our NPCs in hand uh, with consent. What is next? This. This week's sponsor is none other than Dragon Shield, makers of the most amazing RPG accessories you could imagine. This week we look at the Player's Companion Box, which uh, has just got glorious room for all kinds of wonderful accessories that uh, you will need during your game. You've got space for your dice, your pens. There are these uh, foam inserts which allow you to stack your uh, mobile device so that you've got access to all of your digital products easily and uh, readily available. They're executed in this amazing high quality leatherine finish with this beautifully embossed symbol on the cover. So it really is a complete complete solution to storing your character sheet in a beautiful cover and a beautifully protective box. This from Dragon Shield. What more could you ask? It's absolutely stunning. Dragonshield.com forward slash roleplaying is where you can start to place your orders for this new product launching in August. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of How to Be a Great GM. My name is Guy and today we look at how we now take what we've been developing over the last year and turn it into something actionable that we can now use because we are we are at the point where we've got our big idea. We've got our NPCs, we've got all of that. I'm little like we've got it all. You've been on the journey with me, you know what we've got. So let's now journey forward. If you didn't watch last week's episode or the week before, please go and watch them because they do contain an example which I'm using as a running example throughout all of these videos moving forward. And if you don't get it, you'll be a little bit lost. So go check those out first. Right, so our dwarvish blacksmith who is going to be building the Necroforge to bring back his dead daughter has all of these things that they require all over the world that they need to go and get, etc, etc, and the players are going to be trying to stop them. How do we then turn that into a campaign that feels as if there is a narrative structure to it, even though we don't know what the outcome is going to be? Well, we use structure. Now, I have spoken about the one-to-one -one structure, the five-step method, all those different kinds of structures. Each and every single one of them boils down to a few core fundamental things. The players are introduced to this idea or this adventure opportunity for them. They are introduced to potentially the uh, the opposition, the henchman, the nemesis, the villain, whatever style or whatever level of plan this is, is up to you, but they are introduced to the bad guy. They then go on a journey where during this journey they discover all kinds of things about the bad guy, about the situation. They learn of advancements. They, they sometimes succeed. They sometimes lose. They then suffer a twist. Something changes up what they were originally expecting and we discover something new about the entire situation. They then go on another journey where ultimately they finally get to the point where they are ready to then face our final, final enemy, they suffer a setback. Something pulls them back. Something prevents them from getting there. A big something. Then they triumph through that, they push through that, and they face the final confrontation and they win. So whether you break it into five steps or the two, one, two, one structure, it doesn't really matter. The idea is, is that we have this structure. We don't plan anything for this structure. Forget all of the previous videos, the old videos, uh, which were the one-to-one -one structure videos and the five-step method. That required us to plan things out beforehand, to try and anticipate what the players were going to do. We do not know what the players are going to do because we also do not know what the NPCs are going to do. And since it's their plan, we can't project what they are going to do. We can only figure out what they're going to do then and there. But that doesn't help us in terms of prepping and planning for our games. So we then need to have something to work with. So we take that structure and we park the structure in the back of our head and we go, right, we have got our first adventure happening tonight. We need our players to, to do something. Some sort of adventure has to happen, right? Perfect. So... We know where we are on the structure. We are in the introduction to either the problem or the situation or to the scenario where the players are. So it's a pretty open type of structure. If you are running an epic campaign where the players are definitely on a mission to achieve something and to do something, you really want to introduce them to this big, big thing kind of as soon as possible. So first adventure is pretty good. 
So what we're going to be doing is we're going to use the structure that we have in the back of our mind. And every time we are launching a new adventure, we are comparing where are we on the structure? What kind of adventure should the player characters be now experiencing? And how does the NPC's reaction to what the PCs have done, how does that allow us to get that kind of adventure? So in our example, the dwarf needs to get that ancient dwarvish relic hammer thing from the frozen north. The PCs learned about that because this is part of their journey now. They're on the journey part of the uh, structure. So they are journeying out to go and get this uh, hammer before the mad dwarf uh, blacksmith does. They go, they get this thing. What does the dwarf do? The dwarf reacts with anger, with frustration. Does the dwarf try and get the hammer from them or from whomever they gave it to? So we then look at it and we say, well, we're still in the journey structure. So whatever the dwarf is doing needs to give us an, a journey kind of adventure. Aha! So maybe it's not the dwarf that's going to do that. Maybe it is whomever they give the axe to. Or perhaps it's the axe itself. The players rescue the axe from the frozen north. They come back to town. They hand it over to the sheriff or whomever they're supposed to be giving it to. And the axe says, I beg your pardon, but please do not hand me over to that sheriff. He will simply put me in a box. And I do not want to be in a box on a shelf. So uh, rather take me back to the rest of my weaponry and my original owner. And the players go, oh my god, it's a talking axe. That sounds vaguely like Sean Connery. Uh, we're going to take it somewhere. We're, gonna, we're going on a journey. Do you, at no point did we have this planned out, but our structure suggests a journey. Our NPC suggests that we are trying to get it back from the players. What is the best opportunity when the players are on a journey to deliver the axe? It feels like an organic movement of the axe, getting the players now to go somewhere else. And then the NPC is now going to be attacking those players, which is very different from the previous adventure where the NPCs and the, the, the players were racing to get to that axe. How do we know it's very different? Because we use the four adventure types, thwarting, collecting, delivering, and discovering. And we went, well, the last one was a collecting. We went to go and collect the axe from the north. Now we're doing a delivery mission, mission where we're trying to get the axe safely to a destination. We are guarding something en route as opposed to going to try and get something from a place. The adventure types now are giving us our new structure, which we then apply to the actual adventure, and we're set, <claps> done and dusted. And so once that adventure then concludes, we then go, okay, well, now what is the NPC going to do? They don't have the axe anymore because assumedly the PC succeeded in delivering the axe to its final resting place. So now the NPC is going to do what? I would suggest that they attack a library and raid a library and steal some books. Or they pay someone to steal some books because now we have a heist type adventure or we have a mystery type adventure. Who stole the books? Ooh. And why? Uh, they stole the book because the book speaks of another ancient dwarvish weapon or hammer or alternative which could be constructed to uh, make up for the fact that the NPC lost the hammer to the players in this last adventure. I'm hoping that you now start to go, oh my goodness. So by having the outcome that the NPC wants to have as their guiding light, we can then start to create adventures on the fly using structure as our framework and the different types of adventures as our means of ensuring that these things feel fresh and feel different and inspiring ourselves in coming up with all of these different adventures. That's how we do it, folks. So the planning is now done. We're there. We don't have to do anything more from this perspective. Anyway, that's enough from me this week. I hope these have been useful. And <clears throat> yes, leave a comment down below. What has been your biggest aha moment of this entire series so far? What has kind of got you to go, oh, that's it. Let you Leave your comments down below. I, I'd love to, to, to read them and, and be inspired by your inspiration. Anyway, until next time, massive thank you to our Patreons for keeping the lights on, as you can see all the lights. And until next week, I wish you and yours the happiest of gaming.